guys, thanks for joining me on my way into uh, the office this morning. And I uh, just had something that was on my mind. It's uh, more of a question. Are you, uh, do you have a uh, spirit-led worship? Or do you have a spirit that's your scapegoat for worship? That was an interesting uh, reason why I asked that question. All too often, and I have a sneaky suspicion that even maybe you might have been guilty of this at one point in time of your life. Uh, I wouldn't be being honest if I didn't say that at some point in my time, I've done it as well. You get to a rehearsal, whether you set aside a separate day for rehearsal or perhaps you've got a rehearsal a little bit earlier before the Sunday service. But you're doing your rehearsal and Maybe you haven't planned everything through. Maybe there's a transition that you just haven't quite thought out right. Uh, maybe it's a song that you know you want to do, but you just don't know how you want to do it. And especially if you've got a large group of guys and gals uh, in a band and a complete team, it's important to have those kinds of details outlined. But whatever reason, things during the work week have come up and you don't have anything prepared. What winds up happening? Nine times out of ten, you're already saying it, aren't you? Uh, we'll just see where the spirit takes us there, right? We'll just let the spirit lead that. You know, guys, I think all too often, the only time that we really truly call in the spirit is whenever we fail to become prepared. And that's when we expect that the Holy Spirit's going to show up and, and just make something great happen because of our preparedness, our lack of preparedness therein. You know, there are plenty of verses in the Bible that talk about, in reference to worship leaders and worship musicians, about playing skillfully, being skilled. And I think that that word is there for a very, very important reason. It's to denote and to show that there is skill and effort that needs to go into what we do. It's not just a, a fly-by-the-seat uh, type of thing. And I think all too often we talk about the heart of worship. As long as the heart's right, as long as the heart's right, as long as the heart's right. Well, that's true. In order to be a worship leader, you have to first off have a heart that is genuine and honest. And not just, an, uh, not just a heart that's self-serving to want to get up on stage and use it as a platform like we've talked about before. But you do have to have an honest heart. But at the same time, heart's not going to do everything. Part of that having a heart means that you have a heart of worship that is dedicated enough to what you're doing to realize that there are needs there in that congregation, in your congregation, that you need to be ministering to through that worship service, planning out what your worship service needs to look like based on those needs, not just throwing together a worship set because the songs just happen to fit in the same key, but figuring out songs that have everything to do with what may be going on in the lives of the people there in the congregation during a particular frame of time, songs that would really move and inspire in the Spirit. Whenever those things are thought out and planned out intentionally, then that's when the Spirit's really going to work. Now, are there times that your unpreparedness, God can truly come and knock something out of the park? Absolutely. Should we be coming in and planning ahead, making sure that we have everything we possibly can as prepared as we possibly can and make sure that what we're doing is bringing up our best offerings of worship absolutely so do me a favor if there's one phrase that I want you to try to strike out of your vocabulary uh, whether or not you use it every single week or whether or not you just take it and throw it out 
occasionally once a month. Throw it out all together. We'll just let the Spirit lead that one. Because you know what? Spirit should be leading with you on everything. Because Spirit should be in everything that you do. And that includes your preparation. So, go ahead. Stop watching this video. You've got some preparing to do for this Sunday. Love you guys. God loves you more. Have a great day.